To what extent will it extend this trial? And I just wonder your thoughts on Donald Trump attempting to stare down uh, some of these potential jurors, uh, giving them uh, smiles, in some cases scowls and other, depending on what social media site they were subscribed to, what they thought of Donald Trump, the politician. When is this going to be over so we can get to the real stuff? So, Joe, I think jury selection is going at the pace that I would have predicted. I mean, they've, they have at least six jurors and a foreman today. Um, that's, you know, after one day. You know, people were suggesting this jury selection could take up to six weeks. Uh, that's yes, that's right. rarely, been, rarely been my experience. I think they'll have a jury uh, Friday, if not Friday, on Monday. Uh, so I think they'll be ready to start the trial pretty quickly. Well, and then, of course, once the jury is seated, that is when the real trial, if you will, gets underway and that it will be arguments being made, witnesses uh, testifying and the case for the defense to make their case alongside the prosecution. And Ty, I feel like we got maybe somewhat of a preview of what Trump's defense is likely to look like when he spoke on his way into court earlier today, talking about how the payments he made to Michael Cohen that are in question here, he really thinks were legal expenses, not something that he misclassified that should have been related to his campaign. What do you think about that as a defense and whether or not it is likely uh, to work when he is either convicted or acquitted at the end of this trial? Well, Kaylin, I think that's, that's an excellent question. I think the, the problem he has with that argument is the math doesn't support it. Uh, you know, the payment was $130,000. Cohen got paid $412,000, as I recall, uh, as they doubled it up for uh, taxes and gave him a, uh, an additional bonus. So uh, the number of falsified uh, invoices uh, is is substantial, and the number reflected in the total is significantly higher than uh, the one hundred thirty thousand dollars payment. So I think actually that uh, argument plays into the heart of the fraud, and the jury wouldn't have any difficulty distinguishing, you know, four hundred plus thousand dollars from one hundred thirty. I do think that um, that there are defenses here. Certainly, Michael Cohen's credibility is a defense, uh, and then the primary defense, of course. Uh, while it doesn't eliminate all the charges, uh, addresses the more serious charges, the actual felony charges, uh, which require, you know, Trump's intent to avoid uh, a felony beyond the uh, falsification of records. The falsification of records issue is merely a misdemeanor. And if that's all he's convicted on, he's not facing any jeopardy at all. Ty Cobb, I want to ask you about what's happening today in Washington as well. We've got the trial underway in New York, but the Supreme Court hearing arguments uh, on an appeal by one of the January 6th defendants, and this has to do with a law that goes back to the Enron case in 2002, aimed at people who obstruct an official proceeding. There are different ways, of course, to interpret that and whether it even applies to January 6th. Justice Neil Gorsuch challenged the government's lawyers' arguments in defense of that law, used to convict some of the defendants. Here's what he said. We'll have you respond. Would a sit-in that disrupts a trial or access to a federal courthouse qualify? Would a heckler in today's audience qualify or at the State of the Union address? Would pulling a fire alarm uh, um, before a vote qualify for 20 years in federal prison? Where is this going, Ty, and how will it impact potentially the future of Jack Smith's case against Trump? So I think um, the argument today suggests that uh, the Supreme Court may narrow the approach taken by the government. Uh, I do think um, the Solicitor General, who's very talented and uh, I've had the privilege of working with in the past, um, you know, missed a slight opportunity there because I think she made a concession in response to uh, Justice Gorsuch's question when the, the right answer is yes. Uh, all those things could qualify. On the other hand, uh, it's unlikely that the government would bring those cases, and it's certainly uh, that none of them would result in 20 years in prison. So, you know, hypotheticals, as we know from um, the Trump immunity argument, where yeah. Trump's lawyer was asked about whether, you know, Trump could still see, send SEAL Team Six to assassinate a political rival. Hypotheticals sometimes get so far out of bounds uh, that they're not really realistic or helpful in the analysis of the actual statute. But I do think this statute poses some difficulties for both sides. Um, clearly, Congress wanted to uh, criminalize more than the mere uh, destruction of documents. But uh, the way they did it um, was not really consistent with many of the statutes of uh, 
uh, you know, construction, statutory construction. And uh, it poses some, you know, unfortunately, uh, difficulties that only lawyers could quibble about. Um, the, the, uh, the difficulty here, I think, is there is an overriding canon of statutory construction that criminal statutes have to be very, very narrowly construed. And uh, I think that's the primary obstacle for most of the conservative judges, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in this case, because a narrow construction would eliminate many of the um, uh, uses that the government has attempted with this statute in the January 6th uh, and, uh, proceedings. And Ty, just to be clear, do you think that it would do so have a direct ramifications for Jack Smith's case and the, the four charges against Trump in that case, or, or does it not have real bearing on that? That's the, that's the real important question here, Kaylee. And I think the, the uh, likelihood is it would not have a significant impact on Jack Smith's case. Because keep in mind in Jack Smith's case, there are fraudulent documents at the heart of the charge, and those being the false elector certificates. So um, it could have some minimal impact in terms of evidentiary exclusions, but I don't believe that it's going to have the substantive impact that uh, people fear.